RMC is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your retro gaming with their joysticks featuring genuine Sanwar arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave for today's episode which is well, slightly different actually. It's come about because I've been crawling around up in the attic and I came across this which is a project I started all the way back in 2011. It's one of a pair of mini arcade machines I made back then and I went to dig it out really prompted by this. Now this episode isn't a review of this mini Pac-Man machine, you'll have seen this on loads of YouTube channels, they've really been pushing the marketing and well quite right too, it's a really nicely made, well put together replica of an original Pac-Man machine, fully working by the way, great little machine. I can understand why this form factor has come about. I used to own a full-size arcade machine back in 2001 and this is so long ago I went about getting that machine by just picking up a Yellow Pages, phoning an arcade and asking them if they had any machines for sale and sure enough they did in a lockup. And I was even able to use that same Yellow Pages to call a TV repairman who came and serviced the original arcade monitor and had it looking amazing. These are skills that are quickly being lost as we've moved to flat screen televisions and monitors. And what I did with that cabinet was that I put a PC in there and made it an emulation, a main based emulation arcade and it worked great. But the problem I had, much like the problem many of you will have because I'm sure lots of you have considered buying your own or building your own arcade machines in the past, is simply space. I moved to a smaller apartment, I had to get rid of it. And that's when I started thinking about the alternatives. It took me another 10 years from 2001 to actually come up with something. And that alternative was this. There's lots to talk about on this machine, such as why I didn't just go for the bar top form factor, why I built it like I did, and what's inside it, because 2011, if you remember, by that point the Raspberry Pi hadn't even come out. So there's a very interesting machine in there to make it all work and to make it perform well before we have the luxury of single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. This then is the RMC DIY Minicade. Yes, this thing was designed so long ago that what photos I have were taken on my Blackberry. My friend Sean and I designed a template based on the original four player gauntlet arcade cabinet and we scaled it down before tweaking it so that the ergonomics would actually work at the reduced size. We built it out of 12mm thick MDF and I chose a four player cabinet so that the control panel could still house six buttons once shrunk down and it could all still look roughly in proportion. That's because I want to be able to appreciate it as an object in its own right and not just as something to play on. We'll see what powers it shortly but here I was testing the innards out in the workshop and I'm sorry Sean I may have been distracted for a while at this point. The artwork was my department and you can see some mock-ups here as I recreated and redesigned the original artwork to fit the new cabinet shape and there'll be more on that later. I gave the wood three coats of primer and two of black gloss and then I also treated the cut edges with a water and PVA glue mix just to harden up those edges. And that is where we pick up our build from today, over eight years later. So let's start by showing you what's inside having been stored up in the loft including plenty of dust, an old train ticket and who knows what else. And we'll see if we can transform this little cabinet. This mess is the powerhouse behind the cabinet, it's a mini ITX PC. And while I clean it down, you'll see a 250GB Mac Store hard drive to one side. And I really hope that still works because many hours were spent configuring the software on this thing. Probably as many, if not more, as actually building it. It looks like younger Neil has applied thermal paste here by throwing it at the CPU from the other side of the room, so we'll clean that off and reapply a more appropriate pea-sized blob of thermal paste. But the CPU we've got here is an Intel Core 2 Duo E8500. It's hardly cutting edge I know and they're going for about £10 on eBay these days but I'm determined to use what we've got here. Next to the CPU sits 4GB of RAM enjoyed by, wait for it, yes, Windows XP. If that hard drive works that is. And this here is a mini pack. This will interface our joystick and buttons with the PC via USB and it's overkill for this cabinet but I think it's just what I had in my box of spares at the time when I built this. 
Other devices in the cabinet such as the monitor and some illuminated buttons will need power. So I'm drawing the power from the PC, which means we'll have a single button press to turn the whole thing on. We don't want multiple power supplies and power switches. To achieve that, younger Neil cobbled together a pretty dodgy looking terminal strip for the task. So we'll swap that out for a new one and we'll just reattach the rogue wires which have popped out. Fitting a PC power supply in the cabinet just wasn't an option, there's just not room for it. So instead we're using a Pico PSU. That's this little thing here. It sits in our system board's power connector, and then we have an external power brick just like a laptop, so that reduces the need for space inside the cabinet. So the Pico PSU powers the board and the hard drive, and then with a Molex connector we'll attach it to our terminal block. And that should complete the PC build, so let's plug it all in, cross our fingers and hope that it all works, because anyone who's configured an arcade knows just how many hours goes into tweaking one. Or at least that was the case back then, I know things are a little quicker these days with things like the Retro Pi. And yes, I know what you're thinking, an SSD drive would be the first thing to change here, if not replacing it all for a Raspberry Pi. And you'd be right on the SSD, but performance wise this is actually a quite a bit faster than a Pi. And of course the emulators are very well optimised for the CPU. And it has a trick up its sleeve. The system board has a built-in GeForce GPU, so some of those more complex 3D emulators can get a good frame rate on this system, more so than the Pi and its own GPU. To test it of course we'll need a monitor and I have this from the period in my box of spares. This is an 8 inch TFT with composite and VGA input but also it's got a built in aerial for those terrestrial TV channels which no longer broadcast here in the UK. The perfect camping or caravan holiday companion or indeed mini arcade machine monitor. So I'll test it here with an ATX power supply, the external brick that I need for it hasn't arrived just yet but it will be with us before the end of the video. And let me tell you, seeing this come to life was a truly beautiful moment for me. What you're seeing is Windows XP booting with a custom loading image. What you won't see is a mouse cursor, explorer, a desktop background or anything at all which might break the immersion that you're using an arcade machine. Games for me are about escapism and even the quickest flash of just a mouse cursor can bump you back to reality so I tried my best to avoid that happening and it never does on this machine. It launches the Hyperspin front end with game preview videos and artwork depending on what system and what game you have selected. I really like this front end but sadly development stopped some years ago so hey even our front end is retro here but it does look good right? And we can navigate all of the systems and games using just the arcade control panel. No keyboard is required once we've got it all configured. And of course if you really want to you can drop into Windows for a quick game of Solitaire. So the good news then is that no damage was done while it was in storage and it's all working fine technically. What we need to do now though is transform the cabinet into something that's both functional and something we can be proud of. I mentioned bar tops earlier, those are the arcades which look like they've been cut in half and the top half sits on your table. I've got nothing against them, they're practical with a nice big screen and they're suitable for two players. But I favoured this mini style because for me an arcade is something to be enjoyed when it's off as well as when it's on. And a good arcade has such an iconic shape that to change the proportions can detract from my enjoyment of the style and the design of it simply as an object. And that's purely subjective as it should be because what we're talking about here is an object as a piece of art. And we've all got different ideas of what good art is so don't take this as a slant on your bar top if you do have one, that's just my personal taste. Because it's a PC in that cabinet we'll need to keep it cool with a nice big fan and that has a variable speed controller so we can balance cooling with noise. Next up it's the all important audio and I love this. This is a Logitech Z205 speaker. Originally designed to clip on top of a laptop but I thought it was the perfect shape for our gauntlet speaker aperture. And it's a USB device so the signal and the power all comes down one cable which makes it convenient for our build. I then cut some speaker cloth for the hole to look like the original arcade. I think I'm supposed to have some tailor's chalk to do this but uh, a felt tip pen will do. And once cut I stretched and stapled it in place as best I could to cover that hole. A job which would have been far easier done before the panels were constructed but we got there with some patience in the end. And now we can reinstall the top panel at the back with that fan fitted. Oh 
on then to the control panel. These are standard arcade parts, there's nothing miniature about them. And no, before you ask, these are not genuine Sanwa parts. I don't think Sanwa make a joystick that will squeeze into the cabinet, so I went with a Sumitsu, or Simitsu, not quite sure how to pronounce that, LS56 stick. That was the stick I found with the smallest footprint that would actually fit, while still being a full-size stick. And the micro switches were just whatever I had in the spare parts bin. The mini pack USB controller which we plug those into has its own wiring harness to make the job easier but to be honest it's got far more connectors on it than we need and it's more of a hindrance in here with a hell of a lot of unused cables. So a lot of cable time took place to tidy that out of the way but we got it up and working and to test it I had a quick go, in fact I had many quick goes on Russian Attack and Gemini Wing to confirm everything was working great. I also wired up the illuminated credit buttons to the terminal block so they got their power and our monitor was affixed in place with some nice big strips of velcro so it's firmly in place but it can easily be torn off and removed if we need to replace it and there will be a bezel going over that later to complete the look, we'll come back to that. Speaking of completing the look, it's time now for the artwork and I'm, I'm really glad that I kept these files. This is art that I made back in 2011. I took a photo of the side panel of the cabinet and then built up the art to fit our shape. It wasn't an option to just use the original art from the original cabinet and scale that down because it was the wrong dimensions. So instead I painstakingly recreated the whole art layer by layer to fit the shape of our cabinet. It took a long time but it was worth it and I got the look and the shape that we needed. And here is that art printed in the flesh with a lovely glossy finish, it just looks amazing in person. And I wasn't going to risk screwing it up with a rusty old knife, so uh, with a new scalpel in hand I trimmed that artwork very very carefully. Especially around the delicate speaker opening that would be on the front marquee here. And on the control panel you can be a little rougher around the buttonholes because there is a lip around the button so that does cover up all manner of sins. The side art is the largest single piece of art and I'm just rubbing that down onto the cabinet to work out any air bubbles as I fit it. The last thing we want is a great big air bubble in the middle of the wizard or the elf and thankfully it all went on perfectly i didn't have any problems on that front and in my opinion it absolutely transformed the cabinet it looks lovely in place the marquee also looked pretty good after trimming and remember this is a DIY project so remember factory perfection is very difficult to achieve and there are still some more finishing touches to come but I'm happy with the results so far. Arcades generally have a bezel around the monitor, usually with artwork or information on the game's controls, but we can't really afford to lose any screen real estate here. So to give it a nice finish I'm using some 3mm lightly smoked plexiglass which will cut to size. We'll do that carefully by scoring it with a knife, after which I still have 10 fingers and thumbs present, so that's a bonus. And then here's a technique you don't often see, bashing plexiglass with two tape dispensers. And that gives us a nice clean edge. Other methods are very definitely available. Like our monitor, that goes in place with some Velcro, so again it's firmly in place but easy to remove. And it also instantly becomes a magnet to any dust around, so a screen cleaning cloth is a permanent accessory with the cabinet from now on. To finish the marquee edges I've added a little angled strip of plastic and fitted some screws which are as much for the aesthetics as they are for function and I think they're a nice little touch. And finally, it's not a real arcade machine unless it has a kick plate, right? I almost want to scuff this up to make it look more authentic, but uh, I resisted the urge.
And with that, I can finally reveal the finished RMC Minicade. Eight years and a bit in the making. I've not seen such bravery. And here I am for scale. What do you think guys? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm not for a second pretending that this is anything but a DIY project. It's not going to have the precision of laser cut panels that have come out of a factory. So you will have seen some rough edges here and there. But on the whole, I will confess, I found myself sat over there when I'm supposed to be video editing, just looking at the machine. And that for me is exactly what I was trying to achieve. Before I've even stepped up to play on it, I'm looking at this, I'm enjoying it. Waves of nostalgia are coming over me as I look at the shape of it, because for me, the proportions are all great. If I'm sat over there looking at it, well, it might just be far away rather than small. <laughs> I am a perfectionist though, um, so there are some things that irritate me. There's one thing that I would definitely do different if I built this again, and that would be to go to the length to route the edges here so that I could put some T-molding in just have that T-mold finish. Um, I think you can get 12 mil wide T-mold. So uh, that would finish it off nicely. I did look at getting some adhesive T-mold. It was chrome in fact, and it just looked like I was trying to put go faster stripes on my granny's Nissan Micra. It looked terrible. So I took it straight off and just left it as it was. From a playability point of view, it really hits the mark as well. There's enough space here for me to rest my wrists on and play it for extended periods of time. So it's a very playable machine as well as a good thing to look at, in my opinion. You may think you've seen that control panel before somewhere else apart from the original machine, because you have. I actually adapted it to be on my Monster Joystick Mini. And I'm pleased to say Monster are actually now making a six button USB version of the stick. And because we've got access to the ports here, you can quite easily plug in Player 2 and the VGA port. So you could then split that out to a bigger monitor. And um, well, there's, there's all sorts of things that you could do with this. And in fact, if I tell you the original idea for this, why I created two cabinets to start with, that's because one was supposed to be the master and the other a slave, which just split out the image and then had another USB control panel that plugged into the master. So effectively, it would be uh, one computer, two players back to back arcade gaming in, in a kind of a portable style. That was the idea. I don't have that original one anymore because I was forced to sell it. So it's out there somewhere. If you know somebody with one of these, then I created it and I'd love to get hold of it or at least put them together to uh, achieve that original dream of head to head gaming on the mini gauntlet cabinets. But I digress. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I built this cabinet and uh, hopefully gave you some ideas of your own. Let me know if you intend on building your own mini arcade cabinet. And until next time, thank you for watching.
and take care. If you enjoy my content and would like to toss a coin into the hat to support the cave, then check out patreon.com forward slash retro man cave and join the official cave dwellers you can see on the screen now. Thank you for your support.